Here I'm going to calculate the compressor work in order to form a kilogram of liquid nitrogen in the Lindy liquefaction cycle. And so we're going to feed nitrogen into this process at 300 Kelvin 1 bar. And then we're going to enter the Joule Thompson expansion at 200 bar and 165 Kelvin. And so we're going to do the compression in three stages. First to 5 bar, then 25 bar, then 200 bar. In order to be practical, we can't do it in one stage. The temperature would be way too high and energy requirement would be much higher. So in order to do the calculations, we're going to use properties for nitrogen obtained from peng robertson equation of state. Because clearly, enthalpy depends on pressure as well as temperature for a real gas. And so the values shown here and also from calculations, we calculated the fraction of the feed to the Joule-Thompson expansion that becomes liquid as 0 0.0705. So we use those numbers to determine what's the energy requirement per kilogram of liquid nitrogen. So here's the cycle with the three compressors, and we're going to look at each compressor. So compressor one, we have H1 coming in from the spreadsheet and from the table above, 450 kilojoules per kilogram. S1, 4.41 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And so this member is entering one bar, and this is 294 Kelvin. So assuming reversible and adiabatic, which means the pressure now leaving that we're interested in, pressure at 1A, that's leaving the first compressor, 5 bar, so we're going from 1 bar to 5 bar, it's going to have the same entropy, and I should say that's 4.41 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And what we want to then determine is what's the temperature. And so, again, from the spreadsheet, the temperature at 1A is 463 Kelvin. The work we put in raised the temperature, and the enthalpy then at 1A, of course, is higher than what enters, and it's a 6. 34 kilojoules per kilogram, which means we could calculate the work for that first compressor as H1A minus H1, right? Just a change in enthalpy, 634 minus 458. So the work for the first compressor, 176 kilojoules. Kilogram. Well, we can do the same exact type of calculation for the second one. So I'm going to pause and write down those numbers. So the same process after the first compressor, we cooled back to 300 Kelvin. That's in our feed at 5 bar. We use the spreadsheet to get the entropy. And then we use the spreadsheet at 25 bar and find what's the temperature where the entropy is the same value, 3.95. And therefore, we can get the enthalpy leaving the second compressor. And therefore, the work for that second compressor, so this is the second compressor, the work two is just the outlet, H1C minus H1B. So similar value for work for the second one. I'm just going to write down the value. I won't go through the details for the third one, the exact same type of calculations. So going to the higher pressure, bigger pressure fractional or ratio for the third one, then the temperature is significantly higher and therefore more work's required. So the total work to get to 200 bar, the 176 plus 179 plus 262, some 617 kilojoules per kilogram. So this is per kilogram that's fed then into the Joule Thompson expansion. But what we're interested in is what's the work per kilogram of liquid form? Well, why is 0 0.0705? So only 7% of what's fed into Joule Thompson is converted to liquid. So therefore, the work total for the three compressors per kilogram of liquid would be 617 kilojoules divided by 0 0.705 kilograms. So this then, 87.52 kilojoules per kilogram of liquid or 8.75 megajoules per kilogram of liquid. So it takes a lot of energy because we're compressing the gas and then lowering the pressure again. We could do the same calculation for one compressor that went from one bar to 200 bar. If we did that, and I'll just write the numbers down here. So same calculation. One, the temperature is unreasonably high for the outlet for 
compressor, but notice the work is almost double if we use one compressor going through the entire pressure range instead of three.